Hey everybody, this is Garrett with Earth and Time and today we are going to go explore High Island, a geologic and biological and historical wonder here along the Gulf Coast of Texas in the USA. High Island sits in the southeastern portion of Texas, about 80 miles from Houston, about 35 miles from Galveston, and about 40 miles from Port Arthur, Texas. So why is High Island a geologic, biologic, and historic wonder? Well, it's because it sits about 45 feet above sea level, which allows it to be safe from flooding associated with surges from hurricanes or heavy rains in the area. It also creates a different type of biologic environment where you can see the trees off in the distance. Those are all oak trees. And you look here on the right hand side as we get towards the coast and you'll see it's a bunch of just grasses. And it's that way for miles and miles and miles in all directions, except for this one spot where you have this island of oak trees because it sits a little bit higher up. The oaks can get fresh water and it allows a safe place for for migrating birds to come visit. So why is it here? Well, it sits on top of what's known as a salt dome. And I'll show you what one of those look like now. Well, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the geology underneath High Island and what a salt diapir is. Basically, salt diapir is where a body of salt is pushed up through the subsurface due to the loading of sediments, deposition on either side, and what starts as a flat layer of salt is eventually squeezed and moves up because it's incompressible. And so because of that, it, it moves up and it deforms the beds around it. So in this case, you can see here's High Island up here. So here's High Island. Here's the ocean. So this is looking to the south. This would be to the north. And you'll see where High Island ends up being this high over what we call a salt diap here. And the salt diap here creates a bulge in the Earth's surface above where it's risen from depth. And that's what makes High Island so unique is that it occurs so close to the coastline and the salt diap here gets so shallow, it creates this 45 feet of relief. Found this little rest stop. It has a sign about High Island, a historic marker. and. The takeaway here is that this has been an important place for all kinds of communities, be that indigenous people, uh, more modern people, to birds, although I only see a group of vultures over there right now, to other historic factions like pirates coming here and spending time on this island. So let's go check out some more of High Island. So now I'm driving towards the ocean. And I want to give you all a view of what it looks like coming off of High Island and seeing how close it is to the beach and the ocean. So as I come down the hill here, you'll see we have trees on either side. We have trees on either side. And we're going to come down this little hill here. And very drastically and rapidly, we're going to see a change in vegetation as well as the ocean is just in front of us. Along with that, one thing to pay attention to are all the pump jacks that are out here, all the, the oil wells that are producing and gas wells that are producing here around the salt dome that pops High Island up. We'll see as we come off that hill, it's not a very far drive and maybe half a mile tops, you know, less than a kilometer and we're to the beach off on the left hand side. So and there is the Gulf of Mexico. As a geologist, one of the things we need to talk about with High Island is not only its importance for history and for the biology, but also for the geology and what that's meant for producing energy in this region. So one of the reasons the Gulf Coast is so prolific in energy production is because you have a series of salt domes out here which set up these traps for things like oil and gas. And High Island is no different. High Island has produced 140 million barrels of oil from it as well as about 185 million cubic feet of gas. That's a lot of oil and a lot of gas around such a, as we'll see, airily 
not a super extensive feature. So how come that has happens? Well, because these domes come up and they're circular in nature, they create traps all the way around the dome. And so oil and gas can get trapped in around these features and they're able to go in and extract those. You'll see these pump jacks all the way around in a circle around High Island, which you can see behind me with the water tower. And so this sets up, the salt dome set up these geologic traps. And so these are what set up things like spindle top. It's the reason we see, I probably won't be able to see them way out there, but there's actually oil platforms out here in the Gulf of Mexico, but it's all based around this idea of salt tectonics. Again, geology and human history are so intertwined. Without understanding the geology here and understanding the salt movement here and the idea that the salt sets up these traps and can trap hydrocarbons or oil and gas, we wouldn't have these features today. We wouldn't have a high island today without the local geology here. So how aerially extensive is high island? Well, I'm gonna go drive across it to see how long it takes and, and calculate the mileage as we come up onto it over here. So as we drive up on High Island from the coast, I want you to see what it looks like going the other direction and just get a real appreciation for the drastic difference that occurs between the wetlands here on either side and going up onto High Island. And you can imagine the indigenous people sailors would see something like this and just think this was one of the most amazing and beautiful places because it was somewhere they could take shelter and they could probably find supplies so you'll start seeing a difference from right and left as we start getting some topography we're coming up on the hill here so i'm at 14.8 on my odometer let's see how far across this is and you'll see that we're picking up trees there's of course a little cute community up here and we'll just see how far across High Island is. They do have one, if you ever visit here, they do have the one gas station uh, with porta potties. That's always important to know what kind of brakes you can have. And you'll see as I'm driving through, you can see all the trees that are here. So this is where the birds will come and nest and take breaks as they're migrating across the Gulf of Mexico, coming in this area and begin getting ready to take their trip to the north from here a number of bird species will come in. So it looks like we're already coming close to the end of High Island. So here we go. We're actually driving down the other side of High Island now. So we are at 15.7 as we come down on the other side of High Island and we end up getting into this other area. So about 1.3 miles across not very large but for such a small area very very important for the geology biology and history that took place here one of the other things i want to talk about while i'm here at high island is not only the geology and the biology but also the history so because it's a high point along the gulf of mexico it's been a gathering place for a long time from the indigenous people that lived in this area to early settlers to pirates and so I'm going to go visit right now the grave of a pirate, somebody who sailed with the famous Jean Lafitte in this area. So Galveston, which is just to the west of us, was known as a pirate haven for a long time. So Jean Lafitte established an outpost there. We'll go visit what's left of his house that's there at some point and do a video. But one of his cabin boys is buried here. And the story goes that Jean Lafitte and the pirates would come here. They would sail along the coastline, which is just about a mile behind me. And they would come here and throw crazy parties and big to-dos here among the oaks of High Island. One of his cabin boys came back here and settled and actually got a land grant after serving in the Texas military and then the American military. And he is buried here. So he was given a chunk of land. He's buried here. And we're going to go check out his gravesite. As I start approaching the back part of the cemetery, one thing that becomes pretty apparent is there are some old markers here. People born in the 1890s. And you'll see the old style of the marker stones here. 
and we can't even see it's actually overgrown so we can't even see the dates of some of these but among these old markers so one of Jean Lafitte's pirates cabin boys is buried here so here's a little bit about Charles Cronier if I hope I'm saying that correctly he was born in Marseilles France and then he came over here on a French frigate and he ended up being a cabin boy what I've read is he ended up being a cabin boy for Jean Lafitte and for some of Jean Lafitte's privateers or pirates as we know him who actually had a base if I look to the right out in Galveston which is just west over there I love how the whole community works together in helping preserve the birds migrating through here. So I've seen a whole bunch of these big tower birdhouses all over the area. Pretty cool. Lots and lots of birdhouses in this town. And pretty unique ones. High Island is such a unique environment because it sits about 40 feet above sea level. Oak trees are allowed to are able to survive there and this becomes a focal mechanism for bird migrations going from Mexico way off in that distance coming along the coast they can come here they can migrate they can settle in and this is a very well-known Autobahn spot or bird watching spot within the US in fact they made a movie here called the big year with Steve Martin Jack Black and Owen Wilson where they come here and they check out all the the, the birds here because they're trying to find as many bird species as they can So I thought I'd wrap this up by coming to visit some of the Houston Audubon Society areas here on the island. And I don't know if you can hear it, but there's actually birds chirping and singing in the background. Here's a little bit about the migration and some of the birds that come through here. And here's where they're at. And you can see how far they migrate down into South America, all the way up in here. So twice each year, millions of birds travel across this area. And this high island creates a sanctuary for them in their travels because you have so much foliage in here. It's almost like a jungle. This is cool. This is a list of the birds people have seen here as of this is 5 7 22. So that must be towards the end of the season or part of the season. And then they have a little maps where you can walk through. Pretty amazing. I can hear some birds. I haven't seen any, but I can hear some. So I want to thank you all for joining me today to come check out High Island, this amazing geologic place, this amazing biologic place, this amazing place for history. I really appreciate all of you joining me today. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up. If you haven't already, please subscribe to this channel and hit that bell for notifications so you can keep up on all the new adventures as they get loaded. I appreciate each and every one of you watching. I appreciate any comments down below as well. Thank you for joining me on this adventure and I look forward to taking you on more in the future. This is Garrett with Earth and Time. Thank you very much. I've arrived on top of High Island and I'm not sure if this is a good sign or not. We have uh, my, my first sight at High Island and it's a whole bunch of vultures hanging in a tree. <laughs>